Karen Valencic here. If I've not met you yet, I am the creator of the Spiral Impact Methodology, the power to get it done with grace. And I've worked for three decades with leaders and teams. So as we go into this holiday season, I thought it would be worthwhile to share some tips and some thoughts about conflict. Because I imagine if you're like me, you're probably going to be in some environments where you're going to be around people that have very different opinions about things than you do. I think that's only gotten more so as time goes by. So I've divided this into three segments. One is some just comments about conflict generally. Um, two, comments about conflict avoidance. And then three, which is, you know, my favorite, which is how do you create connection when you have huge differences in points of view? So here we go. So first of all, conflict. My work is grounded in the martial arts, and so I, I look at things from a, a, a rather practical, practical way than a lot of people do. And, and on its simplest forms, conflict is this, strike together. And it's interesting to think about the fact that if you've got conflict, it requires at least two people to have it. So if you are in a conflict, there's probably something that you're participating in that's, that's adding to it. So that might, you might not agree with me, but if you look deeper at it, that's, that's true. Now, I'm not going to answer every question in this short video, but, but, but think about that. Now, let's talk about arguing. You know, I've been certainly at my share of holiday gatherings where these arguments erupt. <laughs> and there, my opinion about arguments is nobody ever wins and nothing ever is ever solved, nothing ever changes, but there's a lot of bad feelings. Arguing, unless you're an attorney in court and you're arguing a case or maybe a thesis in school, arguing to me is wasted energy. It just is. And so if you find yourself, but again, it takes two to participate in an argument, so keep that in mind. That's a little bit about conflict. I certainly could talk more about it, but I'm not going to right here. So conflict avoidance. You know, some very wise people, probably many, many, many years ago, came up with the adage to not talk about politics and religion. And you know what? That is some very wise advice. <laughs> so now, I'm not saying that's optimal. I'm saying that's wise if you want to be in a social situation and not get into some big harangue and you don't feel like you have the tools or the tips or the, the skills to do something different than that. Avoidance is, is not an awful thing. However, my point of view on that is that we've, we've kind of buried ourselves in different camps in this country and, and it's really had an impact on our families on people's employment, it's, it's affected a lot of things. And so um, avoidance is fine. It's just you got to recognize that sometimes that is just creating more of a division. And it may create more of a division if you don't handle it well, if you don't avoid it. So keep that in mind. Uh, you know, I'm in one of the groups I gather with over the holidays. Um, one of the men in that group, he very explicitly sets some boundaries ahead of time and he says I am not talking about this this or this so just so you know and and I think that's a great idea um, and because it makes a big difference okay so now my favorite topic is how do we connect how do we connect in a way that builds relationship and connection with people that we disagree with and that is a place that I have I have been experiencing more deliberately with in the last couple of years. And I find I've had some fantastic conversations with people who feel very differently than I do on topics. And, and they're, they're real conversations. They're respectful. And, and it, for me, it really helps me understand more where people are coming from. And it, it builds some bridges. And it doesn't mean they've changed. Although I do have several people, I've had have conversations with that have changed on positions, but it wasn't because I told them so. So now I'm going to share eight tips in terms of how do you create connection, positive connection with people you disagree with. So let's go through those eight. Now the first one 
And all eight of these are really important, and um, the execution of them is, is really the, the tricky part. But the first one actually is, is pretty simple, which is intention. You know, so many people, when they get in a conversation with somebody that has an opposing view, they, their intention is to change them. And if you go into a conversation with that intent, I will guarantee you that you will fail. <laughs> I can guarantee that. Um, so if you have the intent to understand where they're coming from and to learn from them, um, that creates a whole different dynamic. So think about, number one, what is your intention? And if it's to change them, stop right now and go back into avoidance. <laughs> So number two, number two, there's a quote that came out of me uh, quite a few years ago, actually, and that quote only gets more relevant every year. And so that quote is, choosing to be fascinated rather than outraged puts you in a position of power. Let me say that again. Choosing to be fascinated rather than outraged puts you in a position of power. And that is so, so, so very true. Um, and that really kind of goes along with intention. Fascination and curiosity go a long, 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 long way. Can you get in that state of curiosity and fascination? So that's number two. Number three, if you're going to have a conversation where you're going to try to connect, I would suggest making that a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Because if you're in a group of people and you, you start to have a real conversation, you can have some people that really kind of get out of, out of control and get really emotional, start throwing all kinds of things in there. And then you've lost your opportunity to create that connection unless you pick it up later. Um, so if you can, make those one-on-one -on -one conversations. Now, I have had some in group conversations, but again, depending on what that group dynamic is, it can it could get really wonky really fast. So that is one-on-one -on -one con conversations. So number, number four, um, I really like this question. What strikes you? And so if you wanna, you know, if you wanna prompt a conversation, you could say, hey, what struck you about the election last week? Or a month ago, whenever you're watching this. Now that's, I, I've done that, and I have found it to be fascinating. Um, so. You know, what strikes you about whatever the topic is? You know, what's, what strikes you about what's going on downtown? What strikes you about, um, you know, what's going on? So when you say what strikes you, that's, a easier, that, that's an easier question for people to come back with a response. If you say how do you feel about it, they're kind of searching in their feelings. Um, if you say what do you think about it, they kind of get in their analytical mind. But if you say what strikes you, so that really prompts what's just there on the surface. That, that is what I say, that's number four. And number five, you gotta have in your back pocket because when you do that, but there is a four word um, phrase that I have adapted to my language and I use it a lot. Those four words are, I see it differently. I see it differently. And what's magical about those four words is that it's stating where you are. Now, how if you have a tone of voice or an attitude with that, it doesn't work. So you have to you have to be centered. I'll talk about that in a minute. But if you sincerely just from your core with authenticity just say I see that differently. That that says I see it differently. It doesn't say you're wrong. It doesn't say, gosh, you're stupid. It doesn't say any of that stuff. It just says, it just is a marker that says, I'm not, if you, if you say nothing, that implies agreement, maybe. But if you say, I see that differently, it, it creates a space there that there is a difference. So I really like that saying, saying and I've used it a lot. Okay, then ask open-ended questions. It's not yes or no, uh, but avoid why questions because those tend to make people defensive. But, but ask open-ended questions, which is, have you thought about this? And, you know, what would it happen if this happened? Um, 
What is your experience with this? What have you experienced that informs your, your position? That's a rich question, isn't it? So those are really great questions. So number six is ask open-ended questions. Number seven, oh, this is a tough one. This will be the toughest one. Number seven is don't offer your point of view. Don't do it unless you are asked. Because what happens is you get starting to share your point of view um, without it being asked, then it, the whole conversation feels like a setup. So you could say, would you mind, would you like to hear my thoughts on that? That, that would be great if you'd like to share them. Would you like to, to hear my thoughts on it? Yeah, that, that would be awesome. Okay, so that's number seven. Number eight. I saved this to the last, but it, it, maybe it should be first. Um, because I saved it to last because I know a, a lot of you that listen to me, you hear me harping on this a lot. But get centered. You know, centered in my martial arts practice is a, is a state that you get in. And it's, it's really where you're coming from your power, your strength. And it gives you some perspective. It gives you some um, focus and balance. And it, it gives you the, the um, you know, it gives you that space of being in the calm eye of the storm. So that when you're there, you can really respond appropriately. And all seven of these other things will fail if you're not centered. And so, so if, you, if you don't know what that means, and you know, mindfulness, um, mindfulness, emotional intelligence fits in this umbrella category. Uh, th there's a lot of richness around this concept of center. It really incorporates a lot of things, but it really allows you to be in your power, in your strength. Now, I have a free download on my website. If you go, and I'll put the, I'll put the link to my resource page in the show notes, but it's called um, Strengthen Your Balance and Focus While You're Driving. And so I go through and I talk more specifically what center is and kind of guide you in terms of a beginner's approach to centering. Uh, so check that out if you'd like, and um, that, that would be fantastic. Also, you know, these are things, the execution of these things is everything. And so there's, there is a lot to this, but I, I challenge you, create some connection rather than more division, if you can. And, and you know, that's up to you, that's up to you. But I think sometimes that it takes, um, we talk about courage a lot, but I think, you know, have some faith and some cur courage actually that of, of just taking a step in there and, and just observing and, and learning from the other people and um, you might find that you're delighted and you, you create more of a bridge. I'm gonna do myself a plug because you know, I am an author and my latest edition, Spiral Impact, it's the Black Belt edition, is actually a guide. A lot of stories, a lot of you know, how to do things in here that I hope you will find valuable. And right now, I sound like a pitch man here. It's not, it's discounted on Amazon right now. And I think maybe everywhere else. It's available everywhere else. But um, check it out. I don't know how long that'll be discounted. I am recording this the middle of November. So check that out. And I appreciate you hanging in here with me. And I love your thoughts, your comments. I'd love to hear what you've tried. Um, if you've got other suggestions, it would be great. So until next time, remember to get it done with power and heart.